Hello everyone and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a prominent historic cemetery located off of Hull Street on the north end of none other than Boston, Massachusetts, that derives its moniker after shoemaker William Cobb, and that holds the title of being the second oldest cemetery in the whole of its sweeping city, harboring the remains of notable merchants, artisans, freed slaves, and colonists, alongside the bodies of Cotton and Increase Mather, and rumored to be saturated in a slew of ghostly energies and paranormal anomalies. Are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of the one and only Copse Hill Burying Ground? Historically, on February 20th of 1659, what was then recognized as the North End Burying Ground was established on site of our future cemetery, after the town purchased lands atop Copse Hill from John Baker and Daniel Terrell. Amidst a rapidly growing populace, on January 7th of 1708, additional lands were acquired from Judge Samuel Sewell and his wife Hannah for cemetery use. Notably, these lands were inherited by Hannah from her father and master of the mint, John Hull. Sadly, the North End burying grounds were badly marred through the Revolutionary War, during which time the British saw fit to use its markers for target practice, many of which still bear scars to this very day. Additionally, the yard's advantageous height and panoramas would result in it acting as a staging grounds for British artillery through the Battle of Bunker Hill in 1775, when all cannons were trained on Charlestown. Following the war, land encompassing the cemetery would be utilized as a pasture by one Jonathan Mary who would eventually sell his property to Benjamin and Nabby Weld. And on December 18th of 1809, the town would acquire these lands from the couple for the purpose of another graveyard extension, and for the price of only $10,000. In 1819, future Boston Mayor Charles Wells would purchase a small parcel of land adjacent to the cemetery from John Bishop of Medford for use as a private burying grounds. Over the years, both yards would grow, and eventually, the smaller burying grounds would be absorbed by and merged merged with North End. Sadly, by 1840, the whole of the yard had fallen into disrepair, and while the town attempted intermittent maintenance and burials continued through the 1850s, by 1878, time, weather, and neglect had taken visible tolls on the expanse. Fortunately, as its renown grew, preservation efforts would be put in place. While what is now recognized as Copse Hill Burying Ground was not initially listed as a stop along the ever-popular Freedom Trail upon its plotting and creation in 1951, it has since earned itself a stop, and is is heavily frequented by tourists and photographers, and in 1974, the site would be added to the National Register of Historic Places. Copse Hill remains open into the present, harboring the remains of more than 10,000 individuals. And while it's generally strictly open from dawn until dusk, available historic and paranormal touring options frequently push these bounds. Chillingly, the Copse Hill Burying Ground has long been shrouded in stories of the supernatural and perturbing local legends, with both staff and visitors braving it reporting a host of otherworldly happenings, including extreme cold spots felt even on hot days, the constant feelings of being watched, of being followed, and even of being brushed up against by someone or something unseen, and shadowy figures spied stalking the living at a distance. One more sinister and commonly encountered apparition on site is rumored to be that of Reverend Increase Mather. A fire and brimstone preacher in life, Increase was recognized for his dramatic sermons and steadfast beliefs, as well as for his part in the Salem Witch Trials. In death, the Reverend Spirit has been known to manifest aggressively, terrifying and tormenting those who cross his path to the point that many have had to vacate the property. Incidentally, the ghost of Cotton Mather is believed to remain at Copse Hill as well, as legend has has it, his soul is eternally trapped and forced to bear visitation each night from the spirits of those many whom he helped to identify and convict as witches. After dark, some tell that you can hear Cotton's sorrowed cries, pleading with remorse and begging for forgiveness. By the start of the American Revolution, it's estimated that more than 1,000 freed and former enslaved African Americans were laid to rest at Copse Hill. However, later, when the cemetery plotted its Snow Hill Street, a number of these graves were moved, their markers omitted entirely. Some tell this carelessness and desecration led to a number of spirits' unrest, and those who frequent the structures along Snow Hill have told of spook lights by drifting about, and of encounters with semi-aggressive, smoky presences that some believe are the spirits of said disturbed bodies, their true identities lost to time. 
Several informal investigations of Cops Hill have yielded high EMF levels, crystal clear EVPs, odd malfunctions in well-maintained equipment, and even full-bodied entities captured in photography and video, while others have told of strange flashes of light spotted in the skies above, or of distorted faces that appear in reflections or selfies. Notably, George Worthy Lake, who actually holds the title of acting as the first lighthouse keeper in the U.S., and his family hold a small burial plot at Copps Hill. Sadly, in 1718, George, accompanied by his wife, daughter, and three others, were returning to the Boston Light when their canoe capsized, resulting in the deaths of all aboard, including their servant, George Cutler, whose body was never recovered, while also ironically marking Worthy Lake as the first U.S. lighthouse keeper to die on the job. Following their tragic fate, some began telling the Worthy Lake's means and manner of departure from this physical world had left their souls restless, and around their plot, many have reported a constant uneasy feeling, disembodied chatter and commotion heard from beneath the ground, and encounters with the full-bodied manifestations of the Worthy Lakes themselves. Saving what I think we can all agree is the absolute creepiest for last, what is called the Children's Tomb is a granite mausoleum within Copps Hill that's used to store the remains of infants who passed before they could see baptism, in an era when that meant, and we're using heavy air quotes here, that their souls were eternally damned. Those who have neared the children's tomb, a decision we think sounds pretty foolish, have reported intense temperature fluctuations, the combined disembodied shrieks of what sounds to be a crowd of babies crying and screaming together, and the phantom pitter-patter of little feet heard circling about after dark. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you next time.